Hey everybody, welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I am going to be reviewing this mag drill. It's the cheapest one that I found on Amazon, so let's find out if it's any good. If you're wondering what is a magnetic drill, well it is just a little miniature drill press with an electromagnetic base. So this will allow me to place it on a piece of metal, turn on the electromagnet, and then drill my hole. All right, so this is the Moforn 980 watt magnetic drill press. I did buy this with my own money on Amazon. Nobody sent this to me for a review. It is not a sponsored review. This is my honest review on this product. Now, the cheapest one on Amazon is kind of a gray area because there was two cheaper than this one. One was $15 cheaper, but it did not have a chuck. So by the time you bought the chuck, it was actually more than this one. And also, there was a cheaper one that was 220 volt, which is kind of useless here in the US. I needed something I could just take around and use anywhere. And this one does have the standard US 110 volt plug. So here are some of the specs of this drill that are mounted right on the case of the drill itself. It is 110 volts, 980 watts. It has a drilling capacity of 35 millimeters. The speed is 680 revolutions a minute. The rated frequency is 50 hertz. The maximum travel is 150 millimeters, and I'm assuming that the maximum traction is 10,000 newtons. The drill has a cast base and handle, and it's not very light. It weighs in at 29 and a half pounds. Okay, so here's what comes in the box along with the drill itself. It comes with this cutting fluid storage tank, which mounts to the side of the drill. It also comes with a small piece of hose and another fitting, and that is so you can connect this cutting fluid tank to the drill right here through this fitting, and it will apply cutting fluid automatically while you are drilling with it. It also comes with this piece of rope, which I have no idea what this is for, and it also has a twist drill chuck. I also want to point out that the drill comes with the most useless instruction manual I've ever seen. If you're ever bored and you want to read something funny, this would be a good candidate. And I'm sure some of you are wondering why this doesn't just come automatically attached to the drill. Well, that's because most magnetic drills use a weld-in connector, and that's a little bit different than the twist drill bits you might be used to. It doesn't rely just on friction to hold the bit in place like this chuck does. There's actually two little flat spots and set screws that will hold the drill in place and keep it from moving while it's in the chuck. Also along with the magnetic drill, I purchased this annular cutting set. Now, I've got a link to these down in the description of the video. These are like little bitty hole saws, and the drill is made to use these type cutters, and these work well because they only drill out the diameter of the hole. You don't have to remove all of the material like a twist drill bit does. And also, here in the US, it's kind of hard to find drill bits larger than a half of an inch, and these go all the way up to an inch, I don't know if you can see that, uh, an inch and one sixteenth. So these are the larger drill bits that are really hard to find here in the US. So I think I'm gonna start out by just using some regular twist drill bits. So I'm gonna put this chuck in the drill, and as you can see, there's these two flat spots, and I'm gonna line those up with these two set screws, and then it just goes into the drill like so. All right, so I've got this chuck mounted in the drill, and I've already discovered a problem. I have this raised as high as it will go, and I have my twist drill bit here, and it will not fit. There's not enough clearance here to get the drill bit into this chuck. It looks like some smaller bits might work. This is a quarter inch bit, and it's probably gonna be about the biggest twist drill bit I'm gonna be able to use in this drill. Now this isn't gonna be a problem for the annular cutters because they would just fit right into that weld-in connector by themselves, and I wouldn't need this chuck. And they're also much shorter. And I'm sure if I go on the internet and look, I could probably find some twist drills that have that weld-in shank already on them. All right, so I've got this all set up to make my first cut. I've got a piece of quarter inch flat bar and it is clamped at both ends to my wooden work table. So I'm going to turn the electromagnet on and let's see if I can actually pry this loose from the flat bar. It will not, 
it will not budge. I bet I could probably lift this whole table up. No, I'm not strong enough to lift the whole table. But it will not budge with that electromagnet on. So this is a pretty strong electromagnet on this drill. Okay, so I was set to drill my first hole into this flat bar and I discovered a problem with this chuck. Uh, the chuck's totally useless because it, it's out of alignment and it wobbles. The drill bit wants to wiggle back and forth. Here, I'll just fire it up and show you what I'm talking about. So you could see it was just wiggling back and forth and wobbling in there. So it's totally useless. There's no way this is going to drill a hole using that chuck. All right, since that other chuck was an obvious bust and it is no good, I just went ahead and mounted a half inch annular cutter in here. And as you can see, the coolant is dripping down through the little automatic dispensing system. So let's try this out and see how well it will drill this hole. Okay, so here's the hole that I drilled. This is the top side where the drill was located. And then here is the bottom side. And it made a nice clean hole. And I was taking it a little bit easy on this drill because this, this is the first time that I've used it. And I'll say it cut really, really smooth. That, that annular cutter is so much better than a twist drill bit. All right, so that one works so well, I'm just gonna to jump to the largest cutter in that set, which is an inch and the 16th. And I'm also gonna use the pilot pin. I forgot to put that pilot pin in for that last cut. And the, what the pilot pin does is it lets you exactly start your hole where you want it to. So if you've taken a center punch and punched a hole or made a mark where you want to drill into a piece of steel, you just use this pilot pin to line up the cutter with that mark that you've made. All right, so I've got the largest annular cutter set up in the drill, and here's the pilot pin, and I have discovered something that I would never have known from reading that horrible manual, and that is that the pilot pin is spring-loaded, and when you push up on the pilot pin, it opens a valve in here, and that's when it dispenses the fluid. In that last cut, I didn't have the pilot pin in there, so the fluid just came out, so now it will work properly as it is supposed to. And as you can see, I've got the dial turned all the way up on the dispenser and there's nothing coming out. So now I am going to drill this larger hole in that same quarter inch piece of steel. All right, it's all set up. I just turned the magnet on. So let's start drilling. Okay, and as you can see, it did a pretty good job of making some steel wool here. Those are some nice, uh, nice, pretty big chunks of uh, steel there. So uh, let's check out and see what quality size hole that it made. Okay, so there is the hole that it made. Looks like it did just as good a job as that half inch. And so it's doing a pretty good job on this uh, quarter inch steel. Okay, and here is the little core that was left over after I made that hole. And as you can see, there's the little center punch mark exactly in the center. So I was able to put that hole exactly where I wanted it. All right, so I looked around the shop here and I did find some 3 8 inch thick steel. I do have that inch and 1 16th bit still loaded into the drill. So let's see what it will do to this 3 8 <laughs> All right, so here's the hole that it drilled. It was just as easy as drilling in that quarter inch. 
I had no effort trying to drill through that and the drill did not even want to move the whole time that I was drilling. And also here is the core in case you're wondering. That is the core that the annular cutter cut out of it. All right, so I've moved outside and we're going to see how well this drill will work on this I-beam that I've had laying around the shop. But we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to put the drill on the side like so and see how well it will do horizontally. And also there's really no way to make that automatic cutting fluid dispenser work when it's turned horizontally like this. So I'm just going to manually apply the cutting fluid as it cuts. And there were no issues at all drilling through that I-beam. The fact that the drill was mounted on there horizontally made no difference. It still drilled right through that I-beam just as easy as it did in the upright position on all of those other pieces of metal. So this tool turned out to be a little gem if you ask me. Uh, it's going to get a lot of use in the uh, Making Stuff workshop. It works great. As soon as you put this down on a piece of metal and you turn that electromagnet on, it does not move. It's not going to move. It drilled very smoothly. Turning this wheel, it just chewed through whatever I was drilling and I didn't really have any problems with it whatsoever. Now remember, I did have the problem with the chuck, but I did some investigating on this and it's actually this little adapter. These screw together like so and it's this adapter that is lopsided. The chuck is fine. And I know I can get this assembly on Amazon. It's less than $20. So I might pick up one of these. I'm not sure. I don't know if I can just get this adapter, but I'll have to check in on that. But I really don't think I'm going to be using this chuck or a chuck that works on this drill because of the clearance issue. And you really can't use any good size twist drill bits on it anyway. So if you're going to pick up one of these for yourself, I would suggest getting a set of annular cutters and I've got links to the drill and this set down in the description below because most of these mag drills are made for these annular cutters and I can see why because just the combination of the two, it works really, really great. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.